quick tips. See the description for a timestamps index. YouTube auto subtitles available in English. See notes at the end of the video for extra info. Keep an eye on the visual hints throughout the video. Key shortcuts are displayed at the top right of the screen. Mouse button clicks are shown as colors around the cursor. Yellow and blue for the left and right buttons, respectively. Today we will see two simple, yet effective, color matching techniques for photo compositions. We are going to reveal and use two hidden tools. Manual color correction, and black and white points. This subject has been extracted from a different photo. I have already brought it in a separate layer, on top of the background layer. The layer group at the top of the stack already contains the color manipulations we are going to make. Here is the before, and the after. Black and white point, and manual color correction, are not enabled by default. I have already placed them in a customized toolbar of mine, but they can be placed anywhere. Go to the view menu, and select customize. In the dialog that pops up, ensure you are viewing the commands tab. Then scroll down and select unused commands. The tools we want, are now located in the commands list, on the right hand side. Scroll down the list to find them. You can now drag them out, and place them on any already existed toolbar. Or even inside a menu. To do so, grab them, by pressing and holding down the left button of your mouse. Then, move them to the desired location, and release the mouse button. Note that you can only move them to places where the cursor changes to a slim line. To remove them, use the same technique and drag them out of the toolbar, or the menu. A color is a combination of specific hue and saturation values. Hue defines the tint, and saturation defines the intensity. Then, there is lightness, also known as luminance, or luminosity. It defines the brightness. The manual color correction tool will do most of the matching, semi-automatically. Then we'll use couple of curves adjustment layers to fine-tune the color, and the luminance, respectively. I'm going to delete the layer group now, and we will create it from scratch. I have already isolated the subject from the background, so we can now work just on the subject. Since there is no manual color correction adjustment layer, we will work semi-destructively. Duplicate the subject, and make a group for the duplicate. Then open the manual color correction dialog. The resulting adjustments will get applied on the duplicate, as soon as we close the dialog. First clear any previously used settings, by using the reset button. Next turn off the preview on image option. And since we are not going to use presets, switch to the manual target color section. Here we can specify a source and a target color and Paint Shop Pro will remap all the colors based on our selections. As long as we keep the preview option disabled at the top. We can try several times, until we get satisfied. This method usually works best with dark tones. The strap buckles on the subject's backpack, is a good choice for our source color. For the target color, we are not looking for pitch black. We rather want a dark tint, representative of the background's overall, color cast. Feel free to experiment with different tones.
we can further adjust the result using the hue, saturation, and lightness sliders, available inside the dialog. We already have a decent match. With very little effort, but in my eyes, the subject is still a little too greenish. I will add a curves adjustment layer, setting its blend mode to color legacy. This ensures that adjustments done with this curves layer will affect only hue and saturation. Put otherwise, they will affect just color, not lightness. And this is why this blend mode is called color. Ok, let's remove that greenish cast from the subject. With this example, increasing just a tiny bit the reds in the mid-tones is enough. However, in most cases you will have to work with the other color channels too. It looks better already. We can now add another curves adjustment layer. But this time we will set the blend mode to luminance legacy. This means it will affect just the lightness, not the color. Considering that the sun is in front of our subject, its backside is too bright. Furthermore, the highlights at the front should be more defined. We will fix all that with this new curves adjustment layer. Shadows and darker midtones reside in the left half. Brighter midtones and highlights in the right half, and neutral midtones in the middle. By setting a point on the curve and moving it up or down, we can brighten or lighten, respectively, the corresponding tones. The S curve darkens the shadows and darker midtones, and it lightens the brighter midtones and highlights. Here is our final composition. I'm going to delete our color manipulation group now. We will create it again. But this time we will use the black and white points tool. The rest of the workflow will remain the same. Once again, we duplicate the subject, and we create a group for it. This way, we can work just on the subject, without affecting the background. If you haven't enabled the black and white tool yet, see the show the hidden tools section, towards the start of this video. The color selection eyedroppers of this tool adopt the current settings of the global eyedropper. So we need to set that in advance. We definitely want to enable the use all layers option. For this example, I also found that setting the sample range to one pixel is working fine. However, feel free to experiment with broader ranges. Lastly, leave the color profile to RGB. We can now open the black and white points dialog. Just make sure that our subject is the active layer in the layers palette. As opposed to the manual color correction tool. Which only allowed us to specify one source and one target color. We can specify three colors here. Instead of source and target, they are called original, and desired. We start, again, by resetting the dialog. Then we disable preview on image. Else every time we remap one of the three colors, the image would get a live update. Hence preventing us from sampling the next color from the original tones. Alright, let us start by remapping the blacks. We sample the strap buckle as the original black. And then a tinted dark from the background, as the desired remapped color exactly as we did before. Although here I'm sampling from a different tree. The original white should be sampled from a highlighted area on the subject. I will go for his elbow. For the desired white, we are not looking for pure white. So the sun is not a good choice here. We rather want a bright enough area, containing some of the dominant tint in our background image. So I will go for cloud highlights, instead. Now the greys. 
The RGB code of neutral gray is 128, 128, 128. The backpack of the subject seems to contain areas close to neutral gray. So by keeping an eye on the eyedropper tooltip, while hovering the mouse over the backpack, I can choose a shade close to neutral gray, as my original gray. For the desired gray, once again, I will choose a gray shade already containing some of the background's dominant tint. Like this cloud, over here. Feel free to also try disabling the preserve lightness option. For this subject, I found it is better to keep it on. The color matching looks nice, but the luminosity does not. Like before, the back side of the subject is too bright, and the highlights at the front should be a bit more defined. Once again, we will use a curves adjustment layer, with its blend mode set to luminosity legacy. So it affects just the lightness, not the color. In the manual color correction section, we explained the concept behind the S-shaped curve. So I'm speeding up the video to save us time. Much better now. On a second thought, it looks a little reddish. I'm going to fix it by adding another curves adjustment layer. But this time setting it to color legacy blend mode. So it affect just the color, not the lightness. Upping the greens just a bit in the mid-tones is all it takes for this example. Here is our final composition. Before, and after. To read this, you may want to pause the video. Successfully matching parts of different images, is not always possible. Elements like perspective, light source, reflections, and colors, should always be considered before even attempting the composition. Thank you for watching.